What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to build an intelligent AI chatbot for discord so let us get right into it. All right, so in order to create an intelligent AI Discord bot, we need to have a Discord bot in the first place. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our browser and we're going to navigate to discord.com slash developers slash applications, or you just Google your way into the developer portal, or you just click your way into the developer portal. This is the URL. Uh, and we'll go to applications and we, we create a new application uh, which is going to be a bot. Now I have a video on how you can create your own Discord bot uh, in Python. So if you want to have a slow and detailed beginner friendly introduction, uh, watch this video. But basically you just have some bot here. You create this some bot application uh, and you go to, I think, OAuth2. You enable the bot feature here and you say, okay, it's allowed to send messages to uh, read the message history to view channels and so on. Uh, and then basically you go ahead and you copy this, you, um, you join the channel or you join your server with the bot and you have the permissions, you have the token and so on. As I said, everything like that is explained in the discord bot tutorial. Uh, I assume that you somehow know how to create your discord bot. And once you have your discord bot, we can go ahead uh, and make it intelligent. So for this, we're going to need a couple of libraries. First of all, we're going to need uh, pip install discord. Uh, is it discord or discord py? I'm not sure. Let's go with discord.py. I think it's discord.py. This is the library that we're going to need for discord bot itself. And then we're going to use neural intense. I think you know that library because it's written by me and I have used it in a lot of videos already. So we're going to say pip install neural intense. By the way, make sure that you have the latest version because I have made uh, a slight change to the um, to the part where we get the response from the AI because uh, up until now I printed it and now it's returned so we can actually use it in Discord as well. Uh, this is just a slight, uh, a minor change that I made. And what I'm going to use in this video as well, but you don't need to use it, is .env. So pip install .env. This is just what I'm going to use uh, to load the token into my script without showing it to the audience on YouTube. Because of course, if you have the token, you can use my bot on my server and do whatever you want. So uh, even though the bot doesn't have any fancy permissions. Now what's the problem here? It should install that in a second. Uh, while it's doing that, we can start and we can import Discord. This is what we're going to need mainly to connect to the Discord server and operate the bot. We're going to import OS, which is what we're going to use to actually load the environment variables. And we're going to import .env, or actually we're going to say from .env import load.env. This is the function. Um, and we're going to say from neural intents import generic assistant. Now don't let the word assistant confuse you. It's basically just generic chatbot or generic, uh, AI chatbot, whatever you want. Why isn't this installing? Come on. It's not that important actually. So if it doesn't work, it's not a big deal. Um, however, let's start with the actual uh, with the actual uh, coding, what we basically need is we need to have a token. How you get that token doesn't really matter. Uh, you can get this token with .env if you manage to install it. You can just write it into your code directly. The token is what you get from the Discord uh, developer portal for your bot to connect to your bot. Uh, so if you have it, what you need to do is you need to just say um, client equals discord.client and the token is later on uh, used in the end when you run the client. So you say client dot run and you pass the token, whatever this, this token is. It's basically just a long string of stuff like that. Um, and it is what you get on the developer portal. I'm going to use a token which I load from a file. Now I'm going to probably have to pause uh, later on to get the token. Um, or actually, let me do this right now. I'm going to come back to you in a second. Okay, I haven't installed this module for a long time. So the problem is that the module is not called .env. It's called python-.env. This is what I'm actually looking for. 
So we can proceed in a second here. It's basically just what I need to load the token into the environment variables. Then I can get the environment variables. You can also just use a text file. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but now that we have it installed, what we're going to do is we're just going to say load.env. In order for this to work, you would have to have a .env file in the same directory because that is how it finds this file. And the token is then just going to be os.getenv token because inside of the .env file, I have a string that or a line that looks like this token equals and then whatever the token is, right? Uh, and this is what it loads from the environment, uh, from the environment variables. All right, so now we have the token and the client is able to run and we're only going to focus on one event on one function. We're not going to make this too complicated. And this is going to be the on message function. So we're going to have a sync def on message message as a parameter here. And this is of course a client dot event. Don't forget the decorator here or the annotation. And we're going to say, okay, if the message is or if the message author is the client itself, then we're just going to return. Otherwise, we're going to say if the message dot content, which is the actual text starts with, and we're going to say we want every message uh, that is addressed to the bot to start with dollar AI bot. If the message content starts with AI bot, then we're going to respond to it. Now, in order to make the response, uh, in order to make the response, we would have to have uh, an intelligent AI chatbot already, which we haven't done yet. So we're just going to pass here and we're going to talk a little bit about the chatbot itself. So about the intelligence behind the chatbot. And for this, we're going to use the neural intense generic assistant. Um, so what we need to do first is we need to create a chatbot. Um, so chatbot is going to be generic assistant, but this generic assistant takes a parameter called intense and intense is basically just a file path to an intense.json file. And we're going to create this intense.json file. I have explained this in a lot of videos already, but for those of you who don't know what an intense file is, an intense file is basically a file with patterns and with responses. So the patterns are going to be training data for the neural network, uh, or for the model, for the assistant to learn what specific inputs for specific uh, or specific requests for specific categories looks uh, look like. So for example, if I have the category greeting in the intense file, I'm going to say, okay, this is what a greeting could look like. Hello, hey, what's up? Hello world, uh, what you doing or something like that, even though that would already be a request for something else. But basically just hi, whatever you want to provide as an example. And based on those example, it's, uh, examples, it's going to recognize uh, what a greeting looks like. Now, when a user enters something similar that does not have to be hard coded in the intense file, something similar. So for example, instead of, hey, good day, he just enters, hey, uh, the model is going to recognize that as a greeting and respond with a static, a static response, with one of static uh, responses, one of these static responses. So for this, we're going to need an intense.json file. You can call it whatever you want, but I usually call it intense.json. And the JSON file is going to have the following structure. It's going to have curly brackets. Inside of those curly brackets, we're going to have the string intense. And then we're going to have a list of intents like that. And inside of this list, we're going to have individual intents. And those intents are going to consist of a tag, which is the category, for example, greeting or greetings. We're going to have the patterns. This is the training data. And this is a list, for example, hi, hello, hey, what's up, uh, or good day. You can provide as many as examples if you uh, as you want. The more examples you provide, the better the model is going to perform. Um, and after the patterns, we also have the responses. And the responses are going to be static. So 
uh, we don't have to enter these exact messages. We can enter similar messages and they will be classified as a greeting, but the response is going to be fixed. So it's not going to start generating some intelligent text. It's going to respond with a static response. So for example, hello or hello, sir, whatever. Basically, if you provide more than one response, it's going to pick one of them randomly. This is how it works. And if you have one intent done, you just add a comma and you can copy that and you have a second intent. The last one is without a comma. Um, and this one could be, for example, uh, I don't know, uh, H or something. And the questions in here are, how old are you? Or what is your age? You provide a bunch of examples and then the answer is, I was created yesterday, for example, if you're a bot. Um, and I'm not going to write all these intents now uh, in the video because it would be tedious and you got the, the idea of how it's done. You just have these uh, these things here. I'm just going to copy a prepared, uh, prepared intents file. So I'm going to replace this with that. As you can see, the structure is the same intents, a list, and then we have greetings, what, name, age, how, uh, neural nine, Florian, which is me, by and currently and those are just some examples you can add as many as you want to and we're going to use this here as an intense json file so we're going to provide the path intense.json and what we're going to do then is we're just going to train them all neural intense does all the work for you so you just have to say chatbot dot train model and then chatbot.safe model. And it's going to use a default name so you don't even have to provide a path here. So chatbot creating this in, uh, assistant here, training the model, saving the model. And then down here, every time we get a question, every time we get a request to AI bot, what we're going to do is we're just going to say the response to this message is going to be chatbot.safe request so we just make a request to the chatbot with the message dot content the important thing is that we're going to cut off the first uh seven um the first seven characters because we have ai bot which are six and then one blank space so we're going to say from index seven onwards we're going to read um this as the message we're going to send this message to the chatbot we're going to get a response and we're going to say await message dot channel dot sent response. That is actually it. So again, we have an intense file with examples, with patterns, with static responses. Uh, so in this case, we can talk about what are you here for? What can you do? Uh, we can ask for the name of the bot. We can ask for the age of the bot. We can ask for how the bot feels. We can ask for what Neural9 is or what he thinks about Neural9. We can ask uh, about Florian, which is me again. Uh, we can say goodbye and we can ask what it's doing at the moment, which is something I added just right now so that it answers that we're currently recording a video. I'm going to run this on my Neural9 community server in a second here. Um, so we train it on the intense file. We save the model. We create a Discord client. We load the token. And then we just listen for incoming messages. If one starts with that, it's going to respond based on the chatbot. And um, yeah, this is basically just the function call that is going to run the client. So we can now go ahead and first of all, maybe look at the Discord server. You can see that the AI bot is not online. Let me just see if I can find it somewhere here. Uh, AI, there you go, AI bot, this is the bot, it's not online at the moment. And now I'm going to run this script and you're going to see that it's going to come online if I didn't make any mistakes. Of course, we need to train the model first and all that. But once this is done, maybe we should have a message that the client is now running. So where do we usually enter that before? Well, we can do it like that, print client running it's not exactly the point at which the client is running actually client is not the right word let's call this bot bot running so when we see the message we at least know that the model is done with training and saving 
So at the moment, it's still working with uh, neural intents. And once this is done, we got a warning. Okay, it's training, it's training, it's training, it's training. And bot is running. So if we go to the Discord server, we should now see that the bot is online. As you can see, AI bot is online. And of course, we can chat with the AI bot itself. So I can try with hey or hi, I'm not going to get a response. But if I say um, AI bot, what is up? It's going to say hello neural nine community because it is used to talk uh, to the whole community. So let's go to the channel, which is called bot commands and say, AI bot, how are you brother? Which is not a static uh, a static pattern that I have. So how are you, of course, is part of the pattern, but how are you brother is not a static exact string that I provided, but still it's going to be able to answer reasonably. Uh, AI bot, what's your name, bro? Or let's just say, yeah, let's say, what's your name, bro? AI bot, what are you doing right now? We are recording a video about an intelligent AI Discord bot like me. AI bot, what is your name? My name is AI bot. And you can see that if I ask this question a couple of times, what's your name? It's going to answer either with the same with the same response or sooner or later, it's going to give me uh, a different response. For example, I am AI bot is different from my name is AI bot. Sometimes it says, as you can see, my name is AI bot, AI bot. How old are you? I was created on the 16th of July. What other intents do we have? Um, AI bot. Oh, someone is typing. So maybe they're going to talk to AI bot now. Uh, what do you think about neural nine? As you can see, this guy asked, how are you? And it says, I feel great. What do you think about neural nine? I highly recommend watching neural nines, YouTube videos and so on. Um, and now I can just go ahead and say AI bot by bro and says goodbye. So the more intense you add, the more categories you add, the more patterns you add, the more examples and responses you add, the more sophisticated this thing is going to become, right? Uh, so this bot is now going to be online as long as the script is running. So if anyone uh, decides to chat with the bot here from all the users that are online at the moment, uh, they're going to get a response. If I terminate the script, it's not going to work anymore. Uh, unless, of course, I host it somewhere remotely in a server. Uh, but that is how you build a simple easy with 26 lines of code, a simple, intelligent AI chatbot in Python for Discord. All right, guys, so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. As you can see here in the Discord uh, channel, people are uh, talking with a bot here, Neural8, for example, a Neural cult member because they have Neural in the name. Um, so you can see sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. For example, AI bot, how much is two plus two doesn't work because I haven't programmed that. Uh, whereas how is uh, or who made you works because I have an intent for that. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like this video, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. Of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. And other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.